It's okay. So really, uh, I'm here and I'm glad to be here. Okay, well, thank you so much. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Okay, let me remove my mask. I don't need it now. And I will also change the focus. I will adjust the uh, webcam and the OK Perfecto. Got you. We don't have the possibility to speak all together, of course, but I will give the floor to all of you. Um, there was a test with Patricia. It's working. I will now test each one of you. It's working. I mean, in terms of uh, camera and uh, microphone. I don't know if you hear me. This is the translator. Can you hear me? This is the translator. Can you hear me? Okay. Welcome, everyone. The uh, panel I am moderating concerns of philanthropy in art and the new trends. So there's a first session that we have held, held this morning. We uh, dealt with our bonus and uh, sponsoring. So the uh, speakers have been authoritative speakers from top le uh, level uh, public institutions. The session that we are starting right now will be focusing on philanthropy, but uh, I mean, in terms of, you know, private citizens, so the so-called private perspective. Floor goes now to uh, Madalena Salerno and Elio Sini from PART, and um, I will, let's say, give the floor back to me in a few minutes. Thank you. Buongiorno, good morning everyone. And uh, well, first of all, I uh, really would like to thank you for uh, inviting us into this uh, incredible event uh, and this uh, thrilling panel. Thank you so much for uh, well being able to do this on an online basis. Let me just give one second to share my slides with you. Okay, sorry, uh, screen share button doesn't seem to be working. I hope you can hear me. Can you see our screen? Try again. Okay, we have this little technical issue. Let me try again. Should be working now. Okay, so what's part? Okay, P A R T part. So the idea is that we want to purchase cultural goods or assets on an e-commerce basis. So we have created an online platform that basically replicates the um, uh, e-commerce system in order to uh, refurbish and restore works of art. So we made a list of these items uh, requiring restoration works and we treat them as if they were products. And so we have filters, price ranges, purchase type. So uh, crowdfunding, maybe you want to take part. Uh, you can also be the only, let's say, crowdfunder, so to say, to fund the entire restoration work. You can see frescoes, you can see paintings, you can also see sculptures, uh, and we also have themes. For example, love, politics, uh, religion, uh, philosophy. 
and so on and so forth. So that, let's say, cultural goods, so to say, or cultural assets can be as close as possible to, uh, for example, um, audience. For example, restoring the balcony of Romeo and Juliet, or for example, the bust of Socrates, uh, the, whose picture may be offered to a professor just before retirement. Okay, so we take care of 100% of the, if you will, supply chain. We look for the masterpieces, we find the restoration company, we catalog works, we look for the funder, and then, of course, we share communication. So, of course, we talk about who funded the uh, masterpiece. There's also an internal page with the description of the masterpiece, the history, and some curiosities. And you can also have the purchase button replicating, I mean, the e-commerce logic. So this is just, you know, a few clicks away from a restoration project. You may want to, once again, uh, well, uh, launch a restoration work, and you can also see the final product. So, well, this is a tool that people know very well, so it's very familiar. I mean, web in general and e-commerce in a more specific way. This means that, you know, access from all, uh, you know, can be guaranteed. Of course, uh, uh, I'm following, you know, Alex Park. I mean, this kind of stream of thought, including art bonus. Because, you know, we just want to give our support in order to facilitate this procedure as much as we can. There's another thing, and we are so proud of it, Basically, we have, you know, replicated, I mean, the shopping logic also on the uh, Facebook and Instagram shopping windows. So, we uh, created a social media algorithm. Now, this algorithm is a very special, unique project. And so, once again, web funders, if you will, uh, can have different choices. You may want to see the work and they may want, you know, to fund uh, this piece from the shop's windows in social media, or you may uh, display on the payment and the money required. This will be allotted to a specific work of art. And this is incredible because just a few clicks away, I mean, very young people and also millennials may want to fund a part of a restoration and maybe you can receive a shopper or a mobile phone cover or, for example, a part um, T-shirt. These are our rewards. This is a list of merchandising uh, rewards. Uh, I mean, part branded. Take part to save art is our motto, our slogan. And all of this can be accessed. Uh, uh, well, this is something also very cheap. Maybe you just want to give 20 or 30 euros for a restoration work. You can see here we have the cover of a mobile phone, we have a t-shirt or a shopper or a, a small agenda. So what we want to do is to create a network of very young funders deciding, I mean, to get into, I mean, this um, system. It, it's a virtual network. Well, actually, it's also an actual network as soon as we can. So once again, you take part in the restoration and, of course, that you will be rewarded for what you have done. We also have created a list of, let's say, artist-based um, rewards together with Ilaria Gianni, the curator. Maybe this is a sector-specific audience, maybe young collectors or uh, people loving contemporary art. So by restoring an ancient work of art, uh, well, you have a reward. You have uh, an artwork from a contemporary artist. Uh, created, I mean, specially created for a part, so as to reward and gratify the funder. Okay, let me um, take the floor. Well, first of all, I really would like to thank uh, Sylvia Stabile. Thank you so much for this um, opportunity. Um, thank you for having us here. Now, Madeleine has been very exhaustive in um, explaining if you will, the key dynamics and the ways um, we use currently in order to offer our services to try and be, let's say, as uh, attractive and eye-catching as possible, because what we want is uh, an as large uh, audience as possible. We also managed already to get great results. For example, these two, uh, you know, works of art, 
have been uh, restored, uh, we have approved, if you will, certified the final result. Especially during lockdown, so right in the middle of the pandemic, we decided to have uh, this event or pandemic, um, you know, just giving a contribution to the Spallanzani Hospital in Rome. So together with Dario Gianni, our curator, and our friends, we managed, I mean, to, you know, get in touch um, with uh, people. And uh, by this, I mean 12 different artists. Uh, they have offered, I mean, for free, their works, which is what we have used. So, of course, so we have sold them, I mean, in inverted commas, of course, and uh, the entire amount of money uh, has been given to Spallanzani and, by the way, to research that they do in that uh, key hospital in Rome. Now, um, we managed to get other great outcomes in the same time. So, unfortunately, we have, uh, you know, officially opened, I mean, you know, this platform a little bit less than one year ago. So, we immediately had to adjust to all of the, uh, well, let's say, remote operations, for example, talks. And we asked uh, the Tusha University students uh, to uh, talk about uh, uh, restoration systems, uh, for example, new technologies. And I have to say that their, you know, response has been very positive. I mean, you can see, hopefully here, a couple of answers, but we have had uh, many more than this. Taste Food Save Art is the name of another project we are so proud of. So, um, once again, uh, we entered into specific agreements with some restaurants in Rome, Milan, or Florence. The main aim was to put together a partnership. This means that we can purchase uh, vouchers uh, in order to, well, to spend them in a uh, restaurant. Uh, so we, we slightly say that we, we try and fight back against, you know, the uh, decrease of turnover of restaurants because of uh, the pandemic. So we made a long list of restaurants. So uh, you can count on a top quality meal in one of those restaurants. If you do so, you will, you know, directly take part in the restoring or refurbishing a uh, 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 work of art. Since the beginning of this project, we have collected already 40% of the funds required. So, um, well, we're very uh, grateful for this because, um, you know, mass media talked a lot about us and our projects. So we are so thankful and grateful for them, which is what you can see here. So they have helped us um, have a high level of visibility, which in turn has led to our dramatic increase of visits on our website. Okay, by way of conclusion, um, well, let me make the point of this, you know, a sort of a summary of our short presentation. Now, this subject is so, if you will, um, specific, very sector specific. Maybe this is not the right word, but uh, it's something sort of, um, you know, mold-like, which is what we say in Italian. Um, this is especially for the very young people, okay? So art is not mold, okay? We don't want to, uh, you know, uh, fight against, I mean, restoration, but restoration becomes pop, and it becomes pop because we use specific tools well, these tools are very contemporary. This is what young people use. For example, we use an e-commerce platform. We use social media. We also use uh, virtual tours, uh, for example, uh, based on QR codes, which are now positioned close to, to paintings, for example. So one day we will, be, we will go back to museums, and thanks to QR codes, uh, you can immediately uh, read the history of that you know, masterpiece or work of art included the possibility of restoring it. So we try and put together different uh, you know, um, programs 
by, you know, breaking some cliché. So these sectors maybe are not directly linked to art or the uh, history of art or of our heritage. But of course, um, uh, you know, a couple of minutes ago, we talked about the taste of food to save art. So uh, food and wine, contemporary art. We asked the artists to create works whose inspiration is, you know, some works of art to be restored. We try and, uh, you know, involve them, students, and uh, students have to become protagonists in a way. So the main aim is to, uh, well, reach um, a wide audience, I mean, uh, the widest, if it were possible, audience. We really would like to get into the social dynamics of the web, Facebook, uh, Instagram, included. So we try and, uh, let's say, get as many users as possible. So users who can really, let's say, uh, well, appreciate, like, if you will, some of the initiatives of our project. Thank you. Lelio, thanks so much. Thank you. Sorry, uh, we don't have much time today, so we need to keep our presentations quite short today. Okay, once again, family officer, Italian family. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I will also share my screen. Hopefully, we will be luckier than the previous speaker. Now, my point of view today will be a special one. So, um, well, my perspective is different, you know, what I do is managing, well, large assets or heritage. Okay, just one second, sorry, and I hope you can see my shared screen. Here we go. Now, once again, for those who take care of large heritage, well, art has a special function, as you know very well. I mean, uh, it guarantees continuity, or business continuity, as we say today. Risk protection, if this is what you do, well, the number one risk today is uh, uh, dispersion, um, you know, splitting, dividing uh, into too many um, streams. So, art tries to keep heritage uh, together. Oh, it is a sort of an identity system for the family. We have memories, persons, people, intangible values. This turns into okay, once again, a family officer, Italian family. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I will also share my screen. Hopefully, we will be luckier than the previous speaker. Now, my point of view today will be a special one. So, um, well, my perspective is different, you know, what I do is managing, well, large assets or heritage. Okay, just one second, sorry, and I hope you can see my shared screen. Here we go. Now, once again, for those who take care of large heritage, well, art has a special function, as you know very well. I mean, uh, it guarantees continuity, or business continuity, as we say today. 
risk protection is this is what we do well the number one risk today is uh, uh, dispersion um, you know splitting dividing uh, into too many um, streams so art tries to keep heritage uh, together Oh, it is a sort of an identity system for the family. We have memories, persons, people, intangible values. This turns into our so-called uh, continuity, um, let's say, system. There may be you know, uh, gaps between products on the one side or classic elements having to do with um, uh, ownership, power, intergenerational dynamics, uh, dynamic changes, seamless changes. Well, um, all of this will give us the opportunity to have a sort of a common shared feeling, uh, turning into a tangible reality. So uh, all of this, uh, you know, unity or identity of the family uh, can go through collections. First and foremost, collections, art, so the identity of the family, all of this will be, let's say, the identity of the family can be transferred uh, thanks to sharing a message represented by art. Second major area is the strategic philanthropy. But also in this case, uh, uh, basically we um, identify the philanthropic identity of that family and uh, the possibility uh, to turn it into um, sort of a, a link of a long chain. Um, we also have to consider that this is uh, uh, also representing sustainability. Okay, we're talking about art, so let's uh, uh, put aside all of the other elements. Um, there's, um, well, the key concept is to appropriate, I mean, to own the artistic heritage. It takes place behind the scenes uh, when, you know, when it is still informal. So the content of an informal collection uh, helps build a silent, joint, common identity, going through the same eyes receiving the same images, shaping the same emotions, so acting on the same souls. But this is part of the starting point. Uh, so, so we have a total of eight minutes each, so let me be as uh, short as possible and I will share with you some uh, important suggestions. So here we go. So, rationalization is uh, the buzz word here. We will see this in depth in a second, but we have the um, so-called, uh, well, um, if you will, family art mission statement. So, so, we have a mission statement. It can be wide, it can be broad. It has to receive the meanings and the values that art represents within a multi-generational um, heritage. I'm using the word multi-generational because the obligation of those who have the responsibility of a major heritage or assets is to uh, pass it on to the next generation. So we don't have to think of you know, me, myself or ownership. So basically, your assets are a sort of a credit that comes from the future and that you have to give back to the future generations. So, well, maybe naturally you don't want to do this. Maybe you don't feel doing this. But please, you have to think about this. You have to think of the future, managing future generations. Um, 
you have to have this, uh, uh, you know, um, willingness to pass your assets on to the next generations that will follow. Now, this turns into a written document or plan. Now, digitization that we are experiencing these days, well, digitization, in my opinion, uh, is a major resource. So, this is sort of a family museum. So, this is the um, art heritage that the family started identifying. Uh, in terms of uh, creating documents. Uh, so it's a uh, heritage which is shared uh, uh, digitally. So of course we do this to exchange our assets. So this means um, um, we have introduced to introduce a new word, value. So this means that we have some obligation elements. Uh, and uh, sharing. So we need to talk about social impact and uh, we have another obligation. I mean, uh, we need to, to let's say, um, make all of the artistic assets of the family official. So we may want to donate it to a local community, a physical territory, but also a virtual territory. So this means uh, uh, using, uh, you know, the assets. I'm not talking about the market. I'm really talking about the so-called externalization. So we need to um, share the value of beauty. We, we, we have to make it external, so sharing with the rest of the world. So uh, when I say philanthropy, I'm using the modern meaning of this term because philanthropy today has a social impact. Okay, sorry for the interruption. We really have, uh, I mean, eight minutes each. Okay, it's a time to uh, wrap up and draw some conclusions. Okay then, so back to this slide. It's my last slide. This is the meaning of my intervention, you know, my speech. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Patricia. Sorry for this. I know that, uh, you know, eight minutes is maybe not enough for anyone. But once again, we have to comply with eight minutes because um, we have many speakers and 45 minutes only. The floor goes now to Lucia Argentesi from Bulgari. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, Sylvia, and thank you so much for this opportunity. So let me go straight to the point, sharing the screen as a key priority now. I don't think you can see the screen, right? Because I see it's not working. I don't know why. Uh, full screen doesn't work now, sorry. Okay, here we go. 
Today, I will be talking about cultural patronage, so the activities that Bulgaria has been carrying out uh, within, I mean, this project. The part founders have already talked about this um, a minute ago. Um, the first uh, patronage activity from Bulgaria concerns uh, the restoration of Trinita dei Monti. Um, this is a symbol for Bulgaria because it was the, let's say, um, link between the stores that we have in Rome. The first one was in Via Sistini and two stores in Via Condotti and the flagship store at number 10, Via Condotti, very close to the Spanish um, stairs. So, um, this is a tribute to pay homage to our city. Now, the uh, contribution uh, given to the city was 1.5 million euros. Um, we uh, restored uh, uh, Spanish steps in 2016. So, these are the Caracalla uh, Center. Very recently, um, Bulgari also started enhancing the value of the so-called Area Sacra uh, in the city of Rome. Works haven't started yet. There will be um, um, sort of small bridges. Um, we will increase and improve the value of this area. Um, we will collect, uh, uh, let's say, um, artifacts, uh, and we will help the audience to take advantage of this place. It's been closed, uh, actually, for many years, but it's uh, a, a nice, wonderful place uh, with the history of Rome. Caesar, the emperor, was killed right there. So, cultural patronage, what is it? Um, this means that a private person can give money to support culture without having, uh, if you will, in favor of the patron, any economic return. You know, patronage, um, you know, by the way, we are helping here the protector of poets. So there's a moral recognition system. Um, there may be just a thank you message, uh, which is what we have there, or for example, a, a plate, a thank you plate, if you will, uh, just like we did for the Spanish steps in the city of Rome. Uh, there's a donation, which is done, and uh, there's a different, I mean, you know, this is different versus sponsoring. Because in the sponsorship, you know, there's an agreement, uh, you need to specify the economic returns. So you promote the brand or the image of the sponsor, which is not what happens with patronage. I have a one minute video, and um, this is what the patron uh, receives. I mean, it's uh, an improvement and enhancement of his or her image thanks to the money, um, unconstrained money given to an organization or a body.
Okay, I'm back. I hope you've um, watched the video. This is it. Thank you so much. Well, Lucia, thank you. Thank you so much. That's a really very interesting uh, compact speech on uh, uh, patronage by uh, Bulgari. Now, the floor goes to uh, Sahar. And in this case, uh, to have the translation, you have to click uh, uh, the Italian language. Uh, first of all, thank you, Sylvia, and thank you so much for organizing this session. Uh, I'm thrilled and very happy to be included into this conversation today. I do apologize, but I will continue in, in English. Today about art philanthropy, I would like to shed a light on uh, what's happening in, in Africa and in the Middle East in this uh, domain. Models of giving uh, to the art uh, across the globe uh, vary widely. And when it comes to art philanthropy in Africa, the question is usually around which model do we use? Uh, do we, for example, build museums in, in a country or uh, uh, do we set up foundations uh, that can provide small grants to local artists? And this is actually what I want to talk about today, uh, the private uh, uh, sector. Uh, in Africa, artists face many challenges, uh, such as uh, socioeconomic issues, political tension, lack of public or governmental fund uh, supporting to the art scene. Uh, all these factors, of course, adding to the global uh, economic crisis resulting from COVID-19 pandemic lately. Uh, this is all means that the idea of art philanthropy in Africa has never been more important today. Um, if you could, excuse me today, I'm only talking. I didn't prepare any uh, slides, but I will try to, to be short, as short as possible. Um, there are established art foundations on the continent with philanthropic uh, objective uh, to support emerging artists by providing space to display their work, uh, pay for the production, uh, even uh, their participation in international art fairs, which sometimes they cannot afford. Um, their philanthropic work remains uh, crucial in supporting uh, these artists um, to reach their creative potential. As public spending is being cut in Europe and the West, uh, and with the absence of uh, significant uh, public funding, makes uh, art and cultural ecosystem almost entirely dependent on private uh, philanthropy, as uh, many of the um, uh, speakers before me explained. And also in the past 25 years, Africa has witnessed a growth in philanthropic giving um, from the rest of the world, uh, 2.8 billion per year. Only a very tiny fraction actually diverted to, to help the art. Um, uh, Many now uh, uh, of the new uh, uh, art market in Asia, Africa, and Middle East have just started to see, uh, to see new ecosystem emerging uh, around the art patronage and each region adopting different models. It could be different than Europe, well, it depends on the needs in the continent. But there are a series of innovative art philanthropic initiatives, such as the Arab Fund for Art and Culture, uh, launched in 2007, um, uh, the um, African Culture Fund, uh, fu launched in, the, in Bamako 2018, as new models for art patronage in these regions. Several African artists, uh, and this is what I want to highlight, the new uh, trend or the new uh, models, um, several African artists uh, set, are setting up their own art patronage programs uh, to help the next generation, uh, such as the Guest Artist Space, uh, GAS uh, Foundation in Nigeria, founded by the artist Yinka Shinobari, offering artist residency program uh, with um, facilitating local and global artistic exchange. Also, the, the uh, former minister and artist uh, Farouk Hosni, uh, from Egypt founded his own uh, foundation um, uh, that actually focusing on the development of artistic and cultural activities among the new generation of artists, granting awards uh, to artists under uh, 35, and the Adam Hanin Foundation that uh, grant also awards to young sculptures uh, in, in the region. Um, 
there is also the emergence of activist collectors that are serving as patrons of living for living contemporary artists today, similar to the Medici family in, uh, in Italy during the Renaissance. Activist collectors is often the only means uh, of sustaining many artists' uh, practice in the continent. David Altman, uh, the South African businessman, is one of them. His work can range from supporting an artist uh, to build his house, uh, securing and shipping art materials across tricky borders, helping them so solve even the medical issues. We can call it in this, um, in this case an environmentally responsive approach. But even with these great patrons, African uh, still uh, require uh, a stronger helping hand um, from the private corporate uh, philanthropists uh, all over the world in the absence of uh, significant uh, governmental support. If we look at North Africa and then the Middle East, philanthropy and charity is uh, actually a long-standing tradition of social giving. Um, it's normally driven by culture or religion. Um, but some of these foundations has become relatively well established in this sector, I mean in the art sector, and has been the main supporters for many artists in the art scene. The Sewaris Foundation in Egypt established in 2001 are a good example of a progressive foundation um, formed by a big business family, uh, have a long history in philanthropy art uh, work uh, towards social issues, but lately toward art and culture. And in the United Arab Emirates, it has become trendy uh, to open philanthropic uh, organization in the past 15 years. A uh, numerous foundation worth mentioning here is the Sharjah Art Foundation, uh, uh, Abu Dhabi Music Art Foundation, and even uh, collectors' families or family collectors uh, forming their own uh, foundation, like Al Qusaymi Foundation, Salma bint Hamdan Foundation, Al Barjil Foundation, to name few. All of them devote resources to education, art, and culture events across the country. Uh, and here I want to stop at uh, a fine example of uh, in Saudi Arabia, because uh, in the past couple of years, there has been tremendous uh, changing in, in the kingdom. A growing number of family foundation professionally run by uh, are being established. New donors understand how important it is to support artists, not just the art itself. Uh, and this kind of understanding has driven, for instance, the development of uh, the newly serving uh, art scene of Saudi Arabia, where organizations such as Kinda Foundation or uh, MISC Art Institute encouraging artists uh, and art production, enabling cultural diplomacy and exchange in the country. And if this understanding of the importance of support for production in, uh, is prominent uh, in such better funded art scene, it is absolutely uh, crucial for artists in the African context. Uh, at the end, it's, it's just an overview about what's happening in the continent and uh, the different type of, of uh, problems that uh, artists has to face uh, may be different than uh, problems facing the artists here in Europe or in the West. Contemporary art in Africa need academic, academic institution to support them, a private and public funds to sponsor, local and global audience to spectate and buy. Artists need to be exhibited and they need to be bought. Actually, they need to live, uh, to be lived. Um, uh, indeed, there is few African artists managed to do very well in the global art uh, market, such as uh, Sherry Samba, El Ansui, uh, Brahim El Salhi. But there are thousands of talented artists in the continent uh, waiting to be seen, um, especially now when African artists are taking the world uh, by storm. Um, others are waiting to be uh, exposed, actually. Um, I just want to say that there is um, a thread linking art and philanthropy uh, and the role of philanthropy in enabling art to serve society and contribute to, the, to social uh, changes. Um, purpose to enrich people's lives through art and uh, we must ensure that this reflect and contribute to the society of today in Africa. I want to end by 
thanking you really for giving me this opportunity or inviting me uh, to this important platform among these di distinguished uh, speakers today. It's a signal uh, that such a, a platform, important platform, uh, platform um, um, allow um, voices from the continent to contribute. Uh, and through this reality, um, difference uh, can be made. Uh, thank you all for that. I really would like to thank you, Sahara, for so African arts and philanthropy. I think we have three minutes to go. Okay, let's say five. So, one minute each. So, just a short feedback, maybe a key word, a key sentence, really just one minute each. Thank you. Okay, floor goes now to Patricia. Uh, I have no, no sound now. I, I mean, let me try again. Okay, Patricia, can you hear me? No. Okay, no problem. So, we start with, uh, well, Madeleine and Elliot. One minute for you. Now, this is a startup. We have launched this idea just uh, one year ago, so it's a major opportunity. And um, we want to do something to protect, uh, I mean, cultural assets and heritage to promote philanthropy. And, uh, you know, this is the beginning of a long pathway. Thank you so much, including patronage, of course. Okay, Lucia, back to you. Thank you. Really, really interesting. Thank you so much for this incredible opportunity, a unique one. Uh, you know, I've been working in this world, if you will, in terms of, uh, you know, patronage. It's nice to see that the world of art um, is filled with many initiatives that support, uh, you know, um, art and artists. So it is a very interesting perspective. Thank you. Okay, my conclusion today, my take-home message. Um, I'm just repeating what I said before. I mean, uh, for me, this is uh, a key benchmark or reference point, especially when it comes to, you know, taking care of continuity between different generations inside, uh, if you will, uh, you know, family continuity system. Art is an area where we can really compare different, let's say, sensitivities and different approaches of coming from different generations, so creating a you know, sturdy foundation onto which you can build you know, the protection of assets and heritage, a multi-generational wealth. It can turn into culture, sharing, sense of harmony. So based on this, I have to consider art as an unavoidable element inside of heritage or wealth. Art is an important form of investment or growth of value, but the key value I'm thinking of is cohesion inside a family. Okay, 
finished, I thank you. Okay. A couple of minutes for Saha, thank you. I want to thank you all uh, for uh, this uh, great opportunity. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, I enjoyed very much all uh, this talk and uh, to be uh, involved in, in, uh, in this session today. I just want to say that uh, the, there is lots of motivations behind uh, art philanthropy. Um, the core motivation is sustain sustainability and how art patronage models have changed over the last decades uh, and the need to adapt to the 21st uh, century. I just want to add that um, um, technology is, is a big factor and uh, it also needs uh, uh, lots of help in, in the continent. Uh, especially if uh, the majority of uh, uh, citizens in, in Africa are uh, considered to be a millennial. Um, so um, I would like to talk to you next time uh, about uh, what is achieved in this field, I mean in terms of technology and how art uh, patronage and philanthropy help technology in, in, the, in the continent. Thank you. Thank you.